Good morning. Hi, everybody. I must confess that uh, you know it's it's great to be here, and I think it's actually pretty incredible that you folks are putting on uh, such a show. Um, it's very impressive to see uh, something like Ted being put on at at Gun. And I looked at the you know the website, and the first thing it said was you know here are the Ted commandments in terms of what you have to uh, think about. But I'm going to go ahead and violate the Ted commandments right off the bat, and I'm going to boast. Um, I don't know if you know, but I do have one son who was a gun alum, and I have another son who uh, actually is currently a gun sophomore. So it's been great to be here, and it's great the fact that you know uh, we moved to Palo Alto primarily because we could uh, participate in, in the gun education. So you guys should realize that you're pretty lucky. Um, <clears throat> what I am actually going to speak about is a, a little bit of the lessons that I've learned. I mean, I'm clearly in technology and innovation. Uh, and I'll speak to that, but I must also confess that I'm more, I've given over 100 talks, and I give talks on technology, I give talks on innovation, I give talks on business, but this makes me a little bit more nervous because my younger son who's going here said, make sure you don't screw up today. So uh, if you see him, please uh, let him know that I did okay. Okay, that's important to me. Um, so what I thought I'd do is, you know, just a, a really a little bit of uh, quick uh, background on myself. and. As you can see, the first truth that I wanted to talk about is that parents are always not right. Um, I grew up in a small town in India called Hyderabad. And uh, in those days, it used to be that most people, when you talked about what you wanted to do when you were growing up, it was either uh, growing up to do uh, medicine or growing up to do engineering. And it was clear to me uh, in those days itself that uh, medicine was not an option for me because the sight of blood made me squeamish. And so if you uh, want to be a doctor and you can't stand the sight of blood, that's not a very good situation. Uh, and so I, I, I did engineering. But even in those days, it was really clear to me that my passion was journalism, and my passion was communication, and passion was public speaking. And I, what I think the message, therefore, is for all of you here in high school is, as you think about what you want to do, uh, it really is important for you to have passion for what you're trying to do. And I think the message here for me was that uh, even though my parents uh, wanted me to be an engineer, um, I think as parents, all we can do is tell you what we think. Uh, but you're actually far more familiar with what the exciting new areas are. And it's impossible to connect the dots when you're uh, young and think about what you want to do. But make sure that there's a, a real area of passion associated uh, with what you're focused on. Having said that, uh, I think it is also important to remember that parents sometimes are right. And I learned a lot from my parents. Before I get accused of saying uh, things about either parents or teachers, uh, my parents always inculcated in me a couple of things that I think have helped me immensely in terms of what I've done. And the first was you know, the importance of education. Um, I was fortunate in that while I did engineering as an undergrad, I actually went on to do both uh, a master's in computer science as well as uh, MBA. And I think if you believe that there's always a lifelong uh, journey of learning, uh, it's incredible what you have to learn from, not just from uh, you know, your teachers, your parents, your friends. Uh, and in my own position right now, I have 10,000 people at Adobe, and every single day is a learning experience for me because I'm learning something very, very different from each one of them. Uh, the other thing I, I frankly learned from uh, my parents was that you need to learn to let go. Uh, you may not realize this right now, but a lot of what we do as parents, our biggest job in life is really to provide the opportunities that we can to our kids. And if that's something that we can do well, I think we give them the opportunities to succeed later in life. So parents are sometimes right, and I think it is important to remember that. What I wanted to spend most of my time talking about was uh, you know, my own journey and how I found my own path. And uh, for me, again, as I said, growing up, it was really all about how could I uh, think about communication and how could I think about journalism and what was important to me at that point in my career. And it's always important, I think, to remember that following just a conventional path is not necessarily the way to success. Uh, for example, I started two startups, which were always considered risky in those days. 
I, I first worked for a startup, my first job out of school, and most people would tell you that it's really more important to work for an established company and get experience. But it was always important to me in my life to be able to follow my own path and think about what was important to me. And what I learned from being in a startup was that you get exposed to so many different things really early on in your career. You know, I had to do everything from programming, which is what I was doing, to uh, you know, closing the door if necessary at night. And just the entire exposure to startups and how you can think about how you be entrepreneurial, I think is something that has really stood me in good stead. Later on in my life, I actually started my own company as well, a company called Pictra which was involved in digital photography and being able to publish photographs, something that uh, all of you take for granted, whether you're on Facebook or whether you do it in one of the image sharing sites. But we were way ahead of our time 15 years ago. Uh, but again, it was important for me to follow my own path and experience what I wanted to do, uh, because that is really one way in which people learn. Another way, honestly, in which I followed my own path was I did an MBA, and the conventional wisdom when you did an MBA was that, okay, now that you've done a business degree, you should get into business management. And it was also really clear to me at that point that I loved engineering, I loved building products. Uh, that was the passion, and hopefully a, a number of you have used our products like Photoshop or Illustrator or Dreamweaver, but again, it was a way for me to follow my own path. And unless you wake up in the morning uh, having a passion for what you do, it's highly unlikely that you're going to do as great a job um, as people expect you to do. So I think it's really important in each of your endeavors uh, to follow your own path. Whenever somebody tells you that this is a conventional way of either getting ahead or the way to do things, it's okay. It's okay to question that because I think uh, from diversity and creativity, we get new things. And uh, you know, the Valley and this area is clearly incredibly well known for innovation. And innovation comes out of questioning the status quo. So uh, if there's one piece of advice I give people, it's find your own path. And frankly, when we hire at Adobe, when people ask us, what do we hire for? What do we think about when we're looking for people? We look for passion. We look for passion and we look for real creativity in terms of what people want to do because we think that's a bigger predictor to success right now uh, than any other single attribute because intelligence, to be honest, uh, is stable stakes. And so if you, again, have a passion for something that you're doing and you're willing to uh, question the status quo, I think it'll actually stand you in good stead. The other thing that I do want to talk to each one of you about is uh, what kind of an incredible opportunity each one of you have. Uh, for an immigrant from India, uh, being in Silicon Valley right now and being uh, especially in the Bay Area and in Palo Alto, uh, it is really important to think about the opportunities that each one of you has. And um, whether it's in technology that you want to be, whether it's in bio, uh, whether it's in social, the opportunities here in the valley are, are larger than any other part of the world. And it is really important to think about you know, how you want to uh, change the world. Let's talk a little bit about you know, what, what the company that I work for thought about. They really had a vision of wanting to change how publishing happened. And 25 years ago, when you thought about publishing, what publishing really was all about was the ability for large, uh, single machines as the mechanism by which newspapers or magazines were done. Today, it's unheard of to think about publishing as going to be just the realm for a small set of people. We've actually been able to democratize publishing, and everybody in the world can publish. And that was the way in which uh, the founders of the company thought about uh, being big and changing it. For those of you who are interested in a career in technology, I think there's more change happening in technology right now than has happened in the last 30 years. Uh, you tend to have uh, technology paradigm shifts, and sometimes there's a shift associated with mainframe computing to PC computing. But what we're now witnessing is three big technology changes uh, that I think are unprecedented in terms of the scope. And let me talk a little bit about them. The first one is you know, the move towards mobility. And I know all of you take this for granted, but it used to be that when uh, people talked about technology, you were actually just tethered to a computer or you had to be in a lab even before that, or punch cards if you go back a little bit uh, even before that. And the whole move towards mobile computing, 
the desire by every one of you to want to have access to information wherever you are, whenever you want, is going to completely revolutionize how we deal with information and how do we deal with technology. So it is clearly one of the biggest changes that we've seen in the history of computing. The second big change that I, I think you're seeing for all of you who are uh, clearly Facebook users or Twitter is the social phenomenon. And every piece of software in the world is going to be uh, is going to have to change and is going to be thought of not just as how individuals deal with technology, but how you deal with it in a social setting. And again, this is just a massive change. And it was uh, uh, a way in which you think about software if you don't incorporate your friends, if you don't incorporate your social network. And it's not just for consumer-based software. This will also be true for enterprise-based software. So massive change, massive innovation uh, that's going to be uh, created over the next couple of decades. And the third big massive transformation that I think is happening in uh, technology is the move towards the cloud. And I'm sure a number of you have heard about this, but what this really means is that uh, each one of you wants access uh, to everything you have, whether it's email, whether it's your pictures, whether it's your videos, everywhere you go. And so companies that are in the business of technology will have to rethink how they deliver that technology taking advantage of the cloud. And the cloud has some very significant advantages in that you can experience the benefits of the cloud without investing too much in technology. So for somebody who's interested in technology and innovation, there is more paradigm shifts happening right now than have ever happened in the history. And the other thing that's important for those of you who have a creative idea and wish to uh, build a career in technology is access to capital. And clearly, again, Silicon Valley is uh, the place you want to be in terms of access to capital. For those of you who don't know, uh, Sand Hill Road, a couple of miles up from here, was really the impetus or the catalyst for the creation of all of the big companies that you probably know today, from Adobe to Apple to Silicon Graphics to Sun, because it's a creative idea, it's an entrepreneur, and it's an access to capital uh, that creates the kind of technology companies that we know today. The last thing I would say with respect to thinking big is, uh, if, I, if I were to take one of my own uh, life stories, I didn't go to what would have been considered a great school, both for my undergrad as well as for my graduate education. Uh, eventually, I did get an MBA at Berkeley. But the important message, I think, out of that for every one of you as well is that there is a great school and that there is a great place for every one of you wherever you go. And if you take it upon yourself, uh, irrespective of the environment you're in, to understand how you can benefit from it, I think great things can happen. So again, I appreciate all of you inviting me to this TED event. I think it's really impressive uh, that you're thinking about technology and thinking about innovation and how things are really moving in today's world. And the opportunities, frankly, for somebody uh, in technology, uh, the opportunities for somebody in this area to really follow their dreams has never been better. So with that, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the show.